From the Thibodeau Regional Wellness Center, it's the start of another volleyball season. For the fifth year in a row, this is the venue for the LHSAA's Hall of Fame matches. Hi again, everyone. I'm Eric Ritchie, and welcome to another season of volleyball coverage on VSN. So excited to bring you not only matches, shows, high school volleyball polls. We've got it all for you this year. So excited. This show will cover some unbelievable matches. 12 teams were on display here tonight. 11 of those teams a year ago made it at least all the way to the state semifinals. Three of the teams here are defending state champs. Three teams were defending state runners up. So pleased to have all these things coming up your way. But first of all, think about this. It's a new beginning, right? It's a, the beginning of the year. And for us at VSN, we welcome in our newest team members. So excited, so honored to have head coach Jody Pulizano part of the VSN crew this year. Coach Jody, we're so excited about it. What about you? How about this, this broadcasting element of it with all that volleyball knowledge inside? Uh, I think I've, I've, I've definitely forgot a lot of things, but um, it, it's great being on this side. You don't have to worry about wins and losses. Everything's a win. You get to watch great volleyball, uh, and you get to be able to talk about something that you love so much. It was so much fun watching these games next to you, just kind of soaking up your knowledge as a coach, just instinctually what you were seeing on the court. You no, know, you got to run, run the five over here, run the blocker over here. That was so much fun. But as a coach, you know what it's like for these 12 coaches tonight to prepare for not only this matchup, but get ready for the season barely a week away. What's it like when you come into this matchup here at Thibodeau Regional? What are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking uh, I got to figure out the correct lineup, make sure the correct kids are on the court at all times, making sure that my front row is equaling out with my back row. You know, um, if I have a really good hitter on the outside, I don't want to have my two best hitters in at the same time. So it's an opportunity for me to change the lineup, use different strategies, you know, maybe change my defense, maybe test the kids out and say, hey, we're going to do rotation defense this game and we're going to do perimeter this game. Let's see which one's better, you know, and that way we have an opportunity maybe to change some things as the season goes along. You know, do I want to run a 5-1? Do I want to run a 6-2? Yeah. You know, it just depends on what I want. There were two games simultaneously taking place here at the Wellness Center, 3-30, 5.30, 7.30. We're going to break down all those matches, get interviews as well. But first, let's send it over to some more of our VSN crew members. Let's head it over to Paul Boron and Coach Chip Didier. All right, thanks, Eric and Chip. Let's get right into this new season. So many teams with turnover. What are you looking forward to this season? Well, I'm looking for an exciting season. This is a lot of parity throughout the state. I've been to a bunch of team camps. I've been to some scrimmages. I've been following a lot of teams this year. And uh, a lot of teams have reloaded. They're not, they're not uh, starting slow. They're starting right off the bat. And it's going to be an exciting season for volleyball this year. I really believe that. And VSN is going to be a big part of that. And here at the Hall of Fame tournament, so many good teams here. And we got to see four of them in the opening matches of the day. Let's look at the highlights of Dominican against Vanderbilt Catholic and Dunham against Ben Franklin. We start with the three-time defending Division I state champions, Dominican and head coach Jessica Chatelier hosting Vanderbilt with first-year head coach Latasha Wise-Jackson who spent the past three years as an assistant at Dominican. Right away, Cameron Chatelier shows why she's the top returning player in the state with a block and a kill, and Dominican was rolling right from the start. The Terriers have some great talent on their roster as well, like lefty Neil Grace Berry through the block for the kill. And their athletic middle, Kinsey Sebo, with the big hit for the kill. Back to Barry, who gets another kill for Vanderbilt as the Terriers get closer to double digits. Back to Dominican, where setter Gabby Marcello and middle Tamia Williams run the slide to perfection. And later, the two hook up again. Both plays resulting in big kills for Williams and Dominican led 16-8. This Dominican team is loaded. In comes junior Zoe Mitchell for the big put away. Later, it's Chatelier showing more weapons in her arsenal. Yes, she can serve too. Back-to-back -back aces and Dominican is at set point. For that, junior Bailey Corrett finishes it off for a 25-11 first set win for Dominican. Set two now and it's back to Marcelo for the sweet over the shoulder setter dump. Another big time player for Vanderbilt is another lefty. Shea Sanders goes through the block then down the line for a pair of kills for the Terriers. 
Dominican is just so good. Marcelo and Chatelier for the pretty play. Another kill for Chatelier and Dominican rolling again up 11-4. No give up for Vanderbilt. Barry swing tipped at the net, but then out of bounds for a Vanderbilt point. Barry tries the opposite side this time, and the big swing with a kill. Dominican, though, stayed in control. Set point here, and it's Finley Nunez putting it away for the kill and the set as Dominican wins 25-14 to take a two sets to none lead. Hard to talk about Dominican and not mention Lauren Pipitone. The junior Levero made several great plays throughout the match and in set three from the service line gets this one to just go over the tape, falling for an ace. Back to Vanderbilt and it's Sanders again with a powerful swing through the block. Not too much Dominican can do about that one and it's a point for the Terriers. But in the end, it's too much Dominican. One last time for good measure, Cam Chatelier with the kill, and Dominican pulls off a 3-0 sweep, taking set three, 25-14. All right, they're used to being side by side on the bench today. They were on opposite sides on that with Tasha Weiss, Jackson, Jessica Chatelier. So I'll start with you. What was it like to look across at her? <laughs> it's hard. We miss her. We definitely miss Tasha with us. Um, it was a big jump for her. for you, what's it like uh, looking across at her? Well, it's a little bit different for me, but it's always good when um, I can compete against Coach Jessica. Um, and obviously, being on the opposite side of her uh, was a little bit different for me, but uh, a little bit challenging. You know, it's, the little intimidation comes <laughs> with it. But um, she had a great uh, program. She run a good program. So it was awesome. I got a chance to see the girls. I loved them. Um, it was good. It was a good day. Usually we'll have the coaches talk about their own teams, but since you guys know each other so well, I'll ask you what you saw out of her team. I think it took a minute to get going, but I think once they got going, I think they look good. Their defense is very scrappy. Um, their hitters from the outside, having a lefty out there, was a little different for our kids to see, and it took them a little while to get used to that, and I think they're doing a great job. It's early. <laughs> and your analysis, I know you know a lot of those players anyway, but yeah, what you saw even, this even, knowing, even knowing them doesn't make it easier to scout them. Um, obviously, they, you know, they're very good offensively, defensively. They're a solid ball club, you know. Uh, they have very good center. You know, they have an outside camera shadow in his back. They, they solid all the way around. So. All right, and finally, I'll ask each of you, what do you expect out of your three-time champions? My expectation for them is for them to be better. Um, we talked about them at the beginning of the season. Yes, there's been a lot. Expectations taken over this Vanderbilt Catholic team. I just, I just want them to compete. We want to compete. We want to get back into the playoffs where Vanderbilt Catholic is known for being. Coach Greg still has done a great job with the program there, and we just want to get back into the playoffs. We want to compete and get back into the playoffs. Two more first-year head coaches doing battle on court two. Ben Franklin's Kim Buford, and for Dunham, the defending Division Three state champs, it's Megan Myers. The Falcons may have the best front line in all of Division II, and they all get into the act early. Outside, Corey stays for the kill. Right side, Annika Robertson down the line for a kill. And in the middle, another lefty, Aubrey Muirhead, beats the blocks, and Ben Franklin shot out to a 12-3 lead. Dunham has lost a lot of firepower to graduation, but they still have several talented players returning, like Zadie Huggins, who scores off the one-hand push shot. Back to Ben Franklin, who uses a little touch. First, it stays on the short serve for the ace. Then setter Kat Concar comes up with a crafty dump, and it's Ben Franklin winning the set 25-17. Set two, Dunham shows some powerful defense. Huggins with the block shot in the middle for the Tigers' point. Again, it's the middle that proves big for Dunham. Kennedy Stewart shows the power, and Dunham is looking good. You don't see this one every day. Watch Ben Franklin's number four, Gabby Prevost. Dives for the dig, and it's so good it goes over the net for the kill. 
beautiful play. And let's just say that fired her teammates up. They love it. They would love the finish to the set too. Another center dump from Concar. Then big kills from Sophie Roussel. And Alora Jensen. And Ben Franklin slams the door on set two, winning 25-14. Set three and Dunham comes out swinging off the bump set. Kennedy Owens with a great line shot and Dunham is up 8-7. Another big play came from Bree Mills who delivers the one-hand touch shot in traffic to find an open spot in the Falcons defense. Back to Ben Franklin and it's back to Jensen who delivers the in-your-grill kill. Then the Falcons close it out from the service line. Stays with the ace to the back of the Tigers defense. Then on match point, it's Concar for the game winner. Ben Franklin in a sweep over the defending three state champs, taking set three, 25-18. They had a great offensive system. We're just really glad to get on the court and be able to play, you know, um, a good three sets. So we came out with a confidence day. I think the girls are excited just to get on the court again. And we had um, a pretty good offense today. In return, um, really four great players. We have Annika, a lefty on the right side, so she really showed it for us today. And also Corey on the outside. Our setter is just phenomenal. She loves the setter hitters, and, um, and she believes in those girls, so yeah. We've been around volleyball a long time. You know, um, actually the program was a really good program. Everyone knows that, and so to be able to come in and just really take on some girls that have great heart, a great desire to continue to play, and just a really good, a great spirit to team. You know, it's a lot of fun to be around these girls. Well, really, we're just trying to make the game faster, right? Faster, the higher you play above the net, the more successful you are. So we're just pushing up to have those attributes to the game, get higher, run faster plays, right? I saw a very young team, a very talented group of young kids um, making aggressive errors. Like, that's what we preach. If you're going to hit out, hit hit the back wall and we did that a few times. Um, we served out, again, aggressive errors. We're just young. We've got really, really talented young kids um, with new setters who are leading the way and we're just kind of finding a rhythm right now. Names like Pixley and Davey, names that we all know around the state. Give us the names this year we should be watching for for Dunham. Um, Kennedy Stewart, she's uh, one of our seniors. Um, Catherine McDonald, Kennedy Owens, I've got a good group. We're young, but we're, we're still good. All right, Chip. Well, let's start with those defending champions from Dominican. Boy, doesn't look like they lost much. <laughs> very impressive. Very impressive. They're by far the best team I've seen this summertime. And uh, they look like they're in midseason form. They are an outstanding team. They got a great setter. They got an outside hitter that's phenomenal. I saw today they were ranked the best team in the state by uh, Prep Sport, Prep Max Sport, and then they had to consider the best player, the outside, Jessica's daughter. Let's talk about their opponent, Vanderbilt Catholic, led by former Dominican assistant, Latasha Wise Jackson. Obviously, they run, it, run into Dominican today, but what do you expect out of that Terriers volleyball team? Oh, I think she's going to be in the mix in that division. That Division Three is going to be a tough division. That, that's one of the toughest divisions. Uh, but she's got a lot of kids she's got to wade through, and she's got to figure out her lineup. That's going to take her a little time. But I know Latasha. She's done a great job in the past, and I look forward to her uh, putting a very good product out there this season. In the other uh, early match, it was Ben Franklin and Dunham. You saw the highlights a moment ago. Ben Franklin looked really impressive under their new head coach. Ben Franklin might be the biggest team out there. And when I say big, I'm talking about tall. And uh, they're strong, but they're young. They're not an old team. So they're going to be a team that's going to be reckoned with this year and next year. But I think they're going to be right in the mix. St. Thomas Moore and Turlings, and, you know, they lost some, some players. But Ben Frank is coming in here looking really good. Meanwhile, Dunham, uh, great team last year. They've got a new coach. What do you expect out of them? Well, I expect them to take off right where they left off. Uh, I don't know if they're ready to compete for a state championship yet, but I feel that they have a young team and they got some good players and a new coach and a new system. It's going to take them a little while to gel, but they're, they're going to be a good team in that division as well. That's Division Three as well. Well, it was a good start to the day, Chip. A lot of good volleyball and plenty more to come. But up next, let's get back to Eric Ritchie, who's with Sandy Fusel. So glad to have Paul and Coach Chip back. VSN's volleyball coverage continues to roll. But this match and these Hall of Fame matches wouldn't be possible had it not been for our next interview here. Coach Sandy Fusel, 
of Thibodeau Regional Sports Medicine Center, a fifth year in a row. Coach Sandy, how did you come up with the idea for this years ago? And it has evolved into one of the best preseason you know, matches of all Louisiana. Well, when I was at Assumption High School, um, they, they did these Hall of Fame matches in the sport of basketball. And I remember how well received it was in the sport of basketball, then they brought it over to some of the other sports. Uh, they did it in softball. They brought it into volleyball. So when I was hired over here, I said, wouldn't it be nice if we could host some top teams in the state as far as the volleyball matches are concerned. So this is our fifth season. Um, it is really a premier showcase for some of the best, best volleyball teams in the state. And we're just so happy to um, have Assumption serve as the host high school and um, you know, allow us to be able to host the matches here at our, uh, our wellness center gym. Coach Sandy, 12 teams from around the state are here. 11 of those at least made the state semifinal a year ago. So you're right, what a showcase of volleyball in the state of Louisiana. Tell us why it's so important for Thibodeau Regional to give back and to host these things in the community like they do. Oh, absolutely. I mean, our CEO, Greg Stock, is all about community relations and what we can do for the community. So it's it's a win-win for us. We allow these teams to get an extra scrimmage of sorts uh, before their season kicks off next week. But at the same time, um, it's um, sort of a public relations event for us where we can bring in teams not only from our area but throughout the state and watch some high-level volleyball at the same time. So all through the season, you'll hear Thibodeau Regional Sports Medicine Center will be the host of set two. Correct. But also from Thibodeau Regional, there's another host, the ace timeout. Who's responsible for that, Coach? Thibodeau Regional Rise. Come on over here. Yeah. We just happen to have the, <laughs> the, the, the Rise director here, Cooey Fletcher. And Coach Cooey, what a job you have done. I mean, overall with this club, I mean, not just indoor, but you have beach. Now I see boys clinics, youth mm -hmm. clinics. Tell us about what it's been like with Thibodeau Rise literally in just year two. Oh, it's been amazing. The turnout has been amazing. The talent that has come through our doors have been amazing. Our coaches have been great. Very hardworking coaches. And we um, range from ages three to 18, indoor and outdoor training. And we're so excited to be hosting boys this season. So we're excited about that. Tell us what you stress at, at Thibodeau Regional Rise. What do you want people to know that might be trying to get their their daughter into a club and, you know, maybe I should make that drive down to Thibodeau and play for Rise. What, what do you want people to know? Why should they play for Thibodeau Regional Rise? The biggest thing at Rise is that we have all the components where it comes to, of course, hard work, weight training, sports performance, nutrition. We have athletic trainers. So I try, we try our best to mimic as if they were going to the next level, going to college. So that's the, the type of env environment we try to have here and mental classes as well for mental toughness. So we try to have all cover all our bases inside out on the court, physically, mentally, all around. So I feel like it's a great, it's a great program for these um, young athletes. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. So Coach Cooey, Coach Sandy, thank you so much for your sponsorship back with VSN. We're going to get back to the highlights now, show highlights of those second wave games where Hannon and St. Joe's battled, and so did Turley's Catholic and Country Day. A pair of teams whose seasons ended in the state semifinals a year ago. High expectations again for both Becky Bonifee of Hannon and with C.D. Miller and St. Joe's. Like Dominican, Hannon has a dynamic setter-hitter combo in Sarah Kirsch and Sophia Bonifee. The two hook up early and often. The coach's daughter goes off the block, then off the Kirsch bump set, again off the block, and finally, in this string of highlights, a little more cross-court with the power. Hannon led 18-11. St. Joe's again with plenty of talent on their roster, like Blanche Coleman, who finds the open spot for the kill. Hannon finishing the set strong, sophomore middle Beverly Bevelo with the throwdown. Then, off the back set, it's Reese Foster with the sweet roll shot over the blocks. And Hannon takes set one, 25-15. Set two, and it's the Red Stickers who come out swinging. Kaylee McKinney looked impressive on this night. First with the big swing to set the tone, Next play, McKinney on the block, which lands in the back of the Hannon defense. And finally, 
off the sweet set from Molly Perry. It's McKinney powering through the block once again. Back to Hannon, who was playing with a purpose on this night. Kears with the back set, and it's Foster there on the right side for the kill. One more time they go to Foster. This time it's Bonifee with the bump set. And look at Foster with the throwdown. Hannon kept pushing. Bevelo on the kill from the middle. And even from the back row, Bonifee is a threat with the kill. Hannon holds off a late rally and goes up 2-0, winning set two, 25-19. Again, the Red Stickers come out strong in set three. Great play all around here. Libero, Abby Franchise with the diving up. Parry, sweet back set, and Emmy Newman looking nothing like a sophomore with the kill. Very nice. More good play from St. Joe's pass set kill as McKenney comes up with the big kill. Next up, one of St. Joe's seven seniors. It's Addy Uter swinging hard through the block, and it's 10-10. But on this night, too much firepower from Hannon. Again from the back row, Bonifi on leashes. Then from the outside, it's Foster doing her thing once again, and Hannon takes it 3-0 after the 25-20 win in set three. I like that we just kept coming at them. Um, I like that um, our defense uh, is learning. They're progressing every time we play. They do a little bit better, see something a little bit different, and, and do that better. Um, I think our serving was tough. I like that. regular season, what are the goals, what are the expectations in Hannon, where state championships have been a norm, came up a little short last year, but again, the weapons are there. Yeah. Um, my expectation is that we play together, that we have lots of energy, and that we support each other. First and foremost, that, that's my expectations. And I think with all of those things, the rest will come. Well, I saw a lot of great ball control from Hannon. Great, great offense. Um, and I was expecting that. What we are toying around with a lot of different lineups and figuring out what's going to work. So first, first set, you know, we were a little all over the place. Second set, third set, we I think our, our block came alive. Um, just trying to start to start feeling what combinations will work, kind of move around some kids. Toyed around with a six-two and a five-one. Um, we do have an outside hitter that's out right now, and we have other kids that's stepping up. So it's The match of the day took place on court two between Turlings Catholic and head coach Terry Abair, the two-time Division II state runner-up, facing Country Day, led by Julie Ibietta, whose team has won seven straight state championships. Country Day came out swinging. Addison Lonnie with the kill, and it's a quick 12-5 Country Day lead. There are so many tremendous liberos in the state. Savant, Cassidy, Basson, Hollinchek, and Pipitone just to name a few, absolutely add Kenley Nonato to that number. A couple of tremendous ups on this play for the Turlings Catholic libero, but in the end, it's Leela Washington finding the back of the Rebels defense for the point. Country day up big, but never count out Turlings Catholic. Lola Blanchard with the kill and the comeback is on. Coach's daughter is the bear She's now a senior and is she a heady player? Setters dump and it's a three point game. But the Cajuns come up big in crunch time. Watch the blazing fast approach from Lonnie and the smackdown kill. That's a nice play. Then on set point, it's Leah Beverly coming up big in the middle with the kill. And Country Day takes set one, 25 21. Set two, even closer. Washington looking like big sis with the kill here. That gives Country Day the early lead. But the Rebels are feisty. 
an In Your Grill kill from Charlie Poulet, and it's all tied at 10. Still tied later when Blanchard unties it with the middle block, and now it's Turling's Catholic up on top, 17-16. Rebels further advance the lead from the service line on the ace from Brooklyn Blanchard. Then it's Diazbury, the lefty on the power line. Oh my goodness, 23-19 Turlings. Then it's a big block from Aubrey Landclose, and we're all even, one set apiece with the Rebels taking set two, 25-22. Set three, it was Turlings Catholic, the aggressors. Boule with the tip at close range for a 6-2 lead. Then Washington gets up for country day for the impressive block, and the lead was cut to 8-5. Then, the talented Jane Gamble goes through the blocks for the kill, and suddenly Country Day was on top 9-8. The third set lead was short-lived, however. Nanato doing damage from the service line with a pair of aces, helping the Rebels retake the lead. More great plays at the net from Boulay, who gets another kill in traffic. Set point now. Ava Abair right down the heart of the Country Day defense, and it's a 25-20 win, giving Turlings a 2-1 lead. Set four, the great play from both teams continued. Leah Beverly gets the kill and sets the tone early that this would be no joke. Gigi Dezette, big hitter for Country Day, really made her presence known in the fourth set. Big swing here, but it was Turlings in the lead. Thanks to plays like this, as Anna Claire Abair sneaks in a setter's dunk. The Rebels led 14-12. Back to Country Day, who goes back to GG and why not with plays like this spike down the middle. Cuts the Rebels lead to 21-18. More GG. This time the block and Country Day is within one. El Nunez has been a big contributor on varsity since she was a freshman. Big clutch kill here, and now it's Country Day in the lead, 23-21. Let's move ahead to set point. How nice is this set from Washington? The shoot, quick line drive set, and Gamble puts it away. Country Day takes it 25-23, and we're headed to a fifth. How good is Charlie Boulay at finding the holes in the defense? Great shot to help Turling's Catholic jump out to a 4-2 lead. Nunez, she saved her best play for late this game. A couple more kills for the junior, and Country Day is now in the lead at 6-5. Nanato up to her old tricks with the athletic up. Izzy Bear gets it out of the net, and Lant Close puts it away. Turling's Catholic is now back on top, 7-6. Back and forth, back and forth. The Cajuns take their turn with Beverly with the monster block, and she's fired up, and she should be, especially with what's coming next. This next rally took 46 seconds. We'll just shut up and let the play on the court do the talking. Hey, don't tell Terry Bear this is the preseason. Players and coaches alike leaving it all on the court on this night, but it's not over. Another block from Beverly makes it 14-8 country day, and we're down to match point. With zero room for air, Izzy Bear comes up with one of the best shots of the match. She goes knuckle over the block and down the line. She's intense and tells her squad it ain't over. Two points later, however, it was. Washington on the outside barrels the shot off the blocks, and that is that. An exhausting five-set thriller. Country Day victorious after the 15-10 win in set five. Really proud of my kids. We played like this all preseason. They play with a lot of heart, a lot of energy. You know, we, we, 
We're glad we came out with a win today. Turlings is a great program. I think it's a great way for us to start this season. Just so proud of how we battled through. We made some errors. We obviously have a lot of things we got to work on, but it was just a, you, you can't teach competitiveness, and they have that, and they have heart. So they're going to be fun to watch. You know, last year, we did not play any five-set matches until the finals, and that was the first time we had done it. So this is kind of... It's a good thing to like get in here and just kind of have to battle and play for a long time and remain focused and just really excited about what the season has to bring. We lost three starters last year, one of them being Ellie Schneider who's playing at Kansas. Um, but we returned a lot. We have a very large junior class. We have five seniors. We returned a lot of experience. Um, you know, our middles are back. We have three middles, Gigi Gazette, Jane Gamble, and Leah Beverly. Uh, Maggie Schneider's back, setting. Le Layla Washington, who is Leah Washington's little sister, is stepping in and doing a nice job setting as well. And then, you know, Addison Lawney and Julia Henry and Evelyn Rivas. I'm missing somebody, El Nunez. Um, they, they all have a lot of experience. So while we graduated three seniors that had a lot of, carried a big load for us, this group is stepping in and ready to play. So some unbelievable volleyball we saw in those middle round games. Let's start with Country Day. Julie Ibietta, what else is new? Coming off a state championship in Division Five. What was your take on an unbelievable match that they kind of persevered after a good start? Turlings Catholic came back, but Country Day finished it. Well, I think Country Day has to find how to replace the middle from last year, okay? That's the big takeaway from that. And they were able to do it. They, um, they are, they're running a 6-2, and I thought their young kids did a great job being able to come back from losing to Turlings in that game. The momentum was Turlings' way the whole time, but Country Day was able to pull it out and win and finish in five, which I thought did a, a great job for young kids. On the flip side, Terry A. Bear's team got beat in that first set, but they persevered, won the next two, but just came up a little bit short in a, a match that we just saw the highlights of, so back and forth. What's your take on what you saw tonight from Turlings Catholic? Oh, Turlings Libero was probably is the best Libero in the state. She was digging everything, getting balls up, and I think they just ran out of steam. I think they weren't ready for Country Day maybe to be that um, explosive. And uh, give it to Country Day, they were able to set everyone, and they were going pin to pin, and I think they were confusing the defense of Turlings. Becky Bonifee is usually also used to winning state championships. That didn't happen last year. She got tripped up in the semifinals, but man, did they, they look good today against St. Joe's winning 3-0. Oh, they're definitely in mid-season form. Um, actually, I don't know. They might be close to postseason form. Um, of course, you got her um, her daughter on the outside swinging away. The setter's been setting since Sarah has been setting since she's a freshman. So they are very, very, um, let's say, old, but they're very mature in what they know how to do. Um, I thought they did a good job in the middle. They lost their middles last year, but I thought for the most part, they were able to uh, put up a good block. They still were going pin to pin, which is very important. The difference is they now have a left-hander on the outside, which I thought was very impressive. She hits the ball hard, um, and it's harder to dig a left-hander from the outside than it is a right-hander. Yeah, and Bonifee and Kirish, I'll just echo your sentiments yeah. there. They look so good, so talented, and as you said, experienced. The flip side, St. Joe's, a lot of young players, and uh, Coach Seavey, who we just heard from as well, she's kind of looking for that rotation. Does she want to go 5-1 with Molly Perry, or does she want to go 6-2? Molly's been all over the court this year, but so have a lot of her other players. What was your take, and what was your opinion on St. Joe's? Um, I thought middle-wise, I thought they did a great job. Um, their M1 uh, did a phenomenal job. I think her last name is McKinney. Did a phenomenal job in the middle blocking, but also setting up, uh, making good adjustments. Um, defensively, I thought they did a lot better than I thought they were going to do. The rallies were great. Even though they came out on the downside, the rallies in that game were unbelievable. The noise of this place continued for the third round matchups, and it starts on court one with Mount Carmel and E.D. White, a pair of teams who were defending state runners up. And then on court two, you had Assumption taking on another unbelievable North Shore team, and emotion all over the place. Coach, let's check out the highlights and see what happened in those matches. We start the night caps with a pair of defending state runners up. Mount Carmel under first-year head coach Taylor Rishu taking on E.D. White, led by head coach Sarah Johnson. E.D. White came out to play. You might remember Emery Ferret from her stellar performance against Dunham in the state championship last year as a freshman. 
She's a sophomore now and making more big plays. It was a big night for Mount Carmel Jr. outside hitter Giselle Estrada, swinging hard early and late. This kill ties up set one, 13-13. More junior power from the Cubs. Setter Emma Ritchie and middle Emily Caracy teaming up in impressive fashion several times on this night with big results. This Caracy kill put MCA up 21-19. But anytime you play E.D. White, you're in for a battle and a block, then a kill from Ferret, and suddenly we're all tied at 24. And for the first time all day, we're headed to extra points. It's crunch time, and it's the Mount Carmel Middles that stepped up. First up, Brooke Dara with the big block. Then on set point, Dara checks out, Caracy checks back in. Richie with the quick set, Caracy goes with the left hand on the touch shot over the Cardinals defense and Mount Carmel takes set one in impressive fashion, 26-24. Edie White came charging out to the lead in set two. Libero Olivia base on, great pass, and on the end result of this, it's another big play from Verrett with the kill. The veteran leader of this Edie White team is returning All-State senior outside, Brighton Ratcliffe. She's special and puts one off the block for the kill giving the Cardinals the 8-3 lead. Mount Carmel with the returning All-State senior leader as well. Libero Nola Savan, such a clean serve, receive, and pass to Richie, who makes a count with the setter dump. Like Hannon and Turling's Catholic, Edie White has a coach's daughter who is making her mark. Kylie Johnson, just a freshman, looks more like a veteran on the kill here. That put the Cardinals up 10-4. Hey, gone is All-State setter Anna Claire Jones to graduation, so junior Liddy Thibodeau stepping up, learning a new position, and looking good. The sweet back set to Ava Robichaux off the block for the kill. Then, Liddy going with the setter's dump to perfection. Edie White all smiles until what might have been the rally of the day. Like the long rally between Country Day and Turling's Catholic, no description required. Richie closes out the wildness after tremendous saves from Savan and sophomore Mia Lopez, who continues to shine in the preseason. But there was still plenty of meat left on the bone in this set, and the Cardinals would regroup nicely. Baysan, so good at the bump set, gets it to Ellie Landry, who knocks it off the block for the point. Set point now, E.D. White up 24-23, and it's Ferret with the kill as E.D. White squares the match at 1-1, winning 25-23. Set three and Mount Carmel this time came out with vengeance. From the outside, it's junior Olivia Meyer. From the right side, it's senior Caroline Harris. At the service line, back-to-back -back aces from Richie and Mount Carmel shot out to a 7-1 emphatic lead. Later in the set, more Meyer. She's the younger sister of a pair of former Mount Carmel standouts, Taylor and Emily Meyer, Olivia is making her own mark. Back-to-back -back plays ending in similar results. Points for Mount Carmel from the junior six rotation player. You won't go too long without hearing from Brooklyn Ratcliffe and the senior displays her powerful swing on the kill. From senior, we go to freshman as Johnson comes up with another big block cuts the Mount Carmel lead to 22-16. But the Cubs answer the rally and finish strong. Richie throws one down from the right side, and Mount Carmel goes up 2-1, winning the third set, 25-19. More tight play in set four. Another solid night for Caroline Harris, continued with the block shot. Mount Carmel up early. One of Emery Ferret's teammates during the club season for Thibodeau Regional Rise 15s was Katherine Harrison, who set Ferret for the big kill. Big kill? Did someone say big kill? Oh yeah, Brighton Ratcliffe did, and the home crowd is loving that one. The visiting crowd, however, will love this one, as Estrada answers the big hits with one of her own. The power line results in a 10-6 MCA lead, 
and Sarah Johnson has seen enough. She wants a timeout. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This time, it did not cool off the Cubs. The setter hitter connection was in full force. Richie back to the hot hand. And Estrada, the junior outside, goes line again for the kill. Next up, Mount Carmel in motion. And Caracci slips behind Richie with the slide. And oh my, Emily, don't hurt him. Then it's Dara's turn. Off the jump set with the power shot through the block. And Mount Carmel was up 16-11. But remember, this is E.D. White. They are fighters, and when they need a point, they turn to Ratcliffe, who hits the ball with such force, and now it's a two-point Mount Carmel lead. It's 17-15. Then it's Baysong. The junior libero put the Cardinals into the state championship from the service line two years ago as a freshman. She's only gotten better since then. The ace, and we're headed to extra points, tied at 24. Again, more clutch play from Mount Carmel when they needed it most. Tremendous up from Meyer and Richie with the dump that E.D. White did not see coming in that spot. Now it's match point. And a fitting close. On a night that Giselle Estrada stood out, she ends it in style. The kill gives Mount Carmel the 3-1 win after taking set four, 26-24. I just like the team chemistry. Uh, I, I like how they, they find a way to make it happen. I think serving, I think putting up a nice big block on the right side just to slow down a little bit of momentum. I think Giselle coming in on the outside, I think her swings help us out a lot. We're just focusing on consistency and getting better every day. What was your takeaway out of this? What did you just tell your players? Um, I just told them just... We we are learning every day. We're a young team, so I, that's kind of been our model all year long. Every day, you know, just learn something different. Um, we had Coach Andrew this summer, uh, Bayer, and that was his thing. Just you're learning every day, every practice. So if we can learn something different this today, and that's kind of what we did. And even like just turning the notch up, we've got to push even harder. Olivia Basson and Ellie Landry, they were just all over the place tonight with their their digging. So very proud of them. Um, this is a fun group. They just have so much energy, um, but they're young and we have lots of learning to do. Um, I just expect it to kind of be like a slow little climb up, but I do want us to, you know, we will eventually get there, but it's just gonna take maybe a little longer than what we have in the past, but um, we'll get there. Now to the final match of the night on court two, a pair of returning state semifinalists, Tara Campo, the host school Assumption Mustangs, facing a division one final four team from last year, North Shore, led by Danny Davis. Both teams loaded with talented players. Assumption's Cameron Terrio with the sweet save. Then the Mustangs work it to Ava Pennison. Number six has a powerful swing. And she knows this court well. Having played for Thibodeau Rise, Pennison's in her comfort zone and it shows. Two big kills and Assumption led 9-3. The Panthers have great talent too, like Mariah Hammond has a knack for scoring and does just that with the touch shot. Wild rally here, and we've seen a bunch of them tonight. North Shore with some incredible saves, keeping it alive, and Assumption's Jamie Ponville says thanks and does them dirty with the setter dump. Next up, it's Ponville giving it up. Nice back set to Lexi Rogers, who makes the kill from the right side. And Lexi is pumped. I said, she is pumped all the way back to the Mustangs bench. As for Ponville, she was all over the place, now playing outside, and that's not a bad swing for a setter. 14-10, Assumption. More big swings from Assumption. Mackenzie Diaz with the kill, and at this point, we're tied at 20. North Shore with an impressive comeback, but not much you can do to defend volleyball's OTAs off tape ace, and Assumption takes set one, 26-24. Like they did in the season last year, North Shore would make a strong comeback. Nice back set from sophomore setter Emily Martin to senior Mallory Schaff for the kill. More North Shore, this time on defense, where Savannah Lindley Thomas comes up with the solo block, Panthers up 7-5. Danny Davis has been high on his freshman all preseason. Here's one of them, Grace Chalky, going over the block for the tremendous point. Now on the outside, it's the senior Shaft showing the touch at close range. It's 12-12.
back to Assumption, who wasn't going with the changeup to take the lead. Pure heat. Fastballs from Pondville, then Pennison. And suddenly, Assumption is on top 16-15. Remember that score because Assumption would not score again in the set. Yep, that's right. 10 straight points from North Shore to close it out. The comeback jump started with a pair of blocks from Lindley Thomas. Then, a kill on the right side from Hammond. By the time the smoke had cleared, North Shore had squared it up at one after the 25-16 set two win. North Shore rode that momentum the rest of the night, making hustle plays like here to start set three. Hammond a threat even in the back row with the great ball swing. Later on the overpass, Lindley Thomas making it look easy. Then another one of those freshmen, Laney Gilbo coming in from the outside for the kill and North Shore is rolling. Here comes Chalky, yes, another freshman who finds the opening in the back of the Mustangs defense. North Shore led 18-13. Now it's serve receive and Hammond would crush one for the kill, setting up set point. And for that, why not? Let's go back to Hammond, who slams it home for the kill. And North Shore now leads 2-1, winning set 3, 25-20. Another assumption player that calls the Wellness Center home for the club season is Abigail Olimon, a strong player who shows her great swing to start things off in set 4. Then, how about this for a roll shot from Pondville? A nice start to set 4 for assumption. But since that epic comeback back in set two, North Shore just could not be stopped. Like an avalanche coming down the mountain, shaft from the outside and North Shore shot back on top 7-4. Later, it's Hammond, also from the outside, and she was just having her way on this night. Another kill, and North Shore led 12-7. They would close it out by scoring 13 of the next 15 points and close it out in style. Taking set four, 25-19 for a 3-1 win to close out the night. The younger kids stepped up. Uh, the first game made some uncharacteristic, I'll take that back. Normal er uh, errors, mistakes uh, from younger kids. Uh, late in the game, we couldn't finish where we were up by two. However, they settled down. Um, very proud of the way they play. They slowly peck away at things in the second set. And really, um, really, it, the game was turned in the second set when they gave us everything and we matched their intensity and came back with some plays and uh, we made some plays. You told us a couple weeks ago in Homa that you could start as many as three freshmen this year. Are you still with that? And, and give us the projection of this season as you get ready to start the, you know, the gauntlet that you always start with early on. Well, look, it, they, it doesn't matter. They have to step up. They, they have to start. They have to play. Yes, absolutely. So they have to show up. They have to play. Uh, we don't have to go back. We can't bring a, a Tierney or a Reese back. Uh, you know, so they have to step up. And we're going to make some silly mistakes. However, hopefully in the long run, the stretch run, the October run, the November run, that's when they're going to get comfortable and make plays for us then. So some fantastic volleyball to close the night as well. Coach, let's start with Mount Carmel. They beat Edie White 3-1. to one. Highly contested matches, very close, all four sets. First-year coach Taylor Rishu and her Mount Carmel Cubs. What was your take on Mount Carmel? Well, it was nice to see Taylor get her feet wet as her first match. I mean, it was really a rough, a rough match, but I thought she did a really good job keeping her composure. I mean, it's all about, you know, the coaches, the kids look at the coaches. I thought she did a great job. Um, I, th I think uh, the, the Mount Carmel um, setter did a great job setting the ball around, dishing it out. Um, their servers and their defense is phenomenal. When you think about Mount Carmel, you think of defense and the, they, they still play defense. It doesn't matter who's back there. They have heart, they have that grit to get the ball up, and I think that's important. They're young hitters. I think they did a good job putting the ball in play. They still have a lot of work to do, but they look good. E.D. White, you talk about ball control and good defense. That's what I always think of when I think of E.D. White. I thought they did a good job of that as well again today. Sarah Johnson's got some questions too. She's got new setters. She's got to try to figure out the rotations. What did you think about E.D. White? Well, E.D. White's trying to figure out if they're going to run a 6-2 or 5-1 also. I mean, that's that's a hard thing is, you know, your quarterback, do you want to put in two quarterbacks or you just want to put in one? And it's hard to really make that decision because usually the better one – 
the better setter is usually the smaller one, so you really want to take them out in the front row to be a big block. But I thought they did a great job. Both of her setters did a good job. Um, I think number 30 did a great job on the outside on the pin to pin. Uh, they did a really good job moving Mount Carmel's block around. It just Mount Carmel dug more balls. Edie White dug a lot of balls, but Mount Carmel dug more balls, and that's how you win. Court two, another fantastic matchup, and very apropos, so to speak, for North Shore and Danny Davis, who had a slow start last year and finished as strong as any team in the state, making it all the way to the semifinals. He loses to Assumption in set one, and he rallies the troops to win three straight to close it out. Yeah, let's clarify that losing in the beginning of the season last year. Danny is a known to make this schedule rough, okay? He plays the best teams, okay? So, yes, his record is not going to be as great as other teams, and he's ready for the playoffs. I mean, they make it to the semifinals. But um, I think he's trying to fit in some pieces and figure some things out. He has a young team. His middles are really young, and you can tell um, they are struggling sometimes to move from spot to spot because they're not sure of what to do yet. But you could see as the match went on, they got more comfortable, they got more excited, and it makes a difference on that side. And of course, Danny got excited. So when Danny gets excited, he was definitely in a midseason form. Danny's always excited. We have to see Danny Davis excited. Tara Campos got a lot of talent at Assumption, another team that made a run to the Final Four a year ago. What do you think about this year's Assumption team? Oh, Assumption, again, when you're talking about defense, Assumption's been known for defense. Small kids in the back row dig the ball up. I thought they did a good job. I think um, they're trying to figure out who their libero is. Again, they're trying to figure out if they're going to run a 5-1 or a 6-2. Um, I think they got a bunch of uh, kids who can hit. They're just small. They don't have that big kid in the middle, but they got a bunch of kids that can swing. So she's going to have to make a decision on, you know, which best kids are in there, or maybe some games it's one kid and another game it's the other kid. We're just getting started, literally, for this VSN volleyball season. Again, it's a VSN spotlight matchup. We have 15 matches around the state in 10 weeks, and it all starts with Dutchtown hosting St. Joe's on August 31st, the last day of August, but then it just, we're all over the place. We're in Sam Houston, uh, we're in Nacogdoches Central, uh, we've got um, St. Joe's, we've got Mount Carmel Dominican, Turlings Catholic, St. Thomas More. When AOL. you look up and down AOL, when you look up and down the schedule itself for those spotlight matches, what 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 what, what, what excites you? It excites me that we get to go to different parts of the state and everybody gets to show their their culture of what they do. Yes. You know, I think that's important for us as a volleyball community to understand the importance of all of our programs and the public schools, private schools. I love I love our spotlight schedule. I think it shows us who we are. Affiliates again. So Newman, Mount Carmel, Dominican Sacred Heart in our area. Of course, St. Thomas More does their own broadcast and plays them on VSN. But we picked up, again, Coach, many new affiliates. Parkview Baptist, who I think is just going to be outstanding this year. You mentioned AOL and Coach Don Landry will have three of their matches this season. Sam Houston is now on board. Westminster Christian is on board. So excited for that as well. So there is a lot to be excited about, not to mention even our show, VSN Volleyball Weekly, basically a one-hour podcast full of highlights, interviews, previews. Coach Jody, I, I got to get you your mic, your podcast mic. Are you ready for this? Oh, I'm ready for that podcast mic. I've been waiting. I have a spot for it on my desk. <laughs> Very good. So, again, we'll do the VSN Power Top 25 poll. Uh, we'll talk about that each week and uh, just so much to get to. We'll have college volleyball as well. We're going to preview a team each week. And, um, man, just so excited for the season. Coach Jody, let's do this. Let's do it. All right. Let's uh, – Say goodnight from Thibodeau Regional. I want to thank Paul Boron and Chip Didier as well, and Sean Meir, who also helped us with highlights all night from Court 2. So for Coach Jody Pulizano, I'm Eric Ritchie. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned to VSN Social Media. We'll be releasing our schedules and our top 25 polls preseason-wise. So be on the lookout. But for now, thanks for watching, and good night.